Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today you will learn about the three most important components that all professional runners have which makes them crazy fast. You must have all these three components and lacking in any one of these will limit your running potential. So stick to the end to find out the most important factor. So this video is a summary of everything I've learned from watching hours of running coaches such as Sage Kennedy and Jack Daniels. No, not the whiskey but the running coach. So let's get started. First off, elite runners have a very high VO2 max. Basically your VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen you can effectively use during exercise. And your VO2 max pace is the pace at your VO2 max. Which means any faster from that pace, you are still at maximum oxygen carrying capacity and you're slowly moving into an anaerobic energy system. So why do we want to train at our VO2 max pace? Why not higher and definitely why not lower? As Jack Daniels likes to put it, the only way for your body to get an adaptive response is to stress that particular system. If you keep training below your VO2 max, you'll simply not have an adaptive response. But what happens if you train much faster than your VO2 max pace? You won't be able to complete your whole training set. For example, if you feel very good on the first set and you sprint way too hard, and then the subsequent set is slower and slower until you are running below your VO2 max pace. But you're not gaining anything because you are not training your VO2 max. So instead of running 12 minutes at your VO2 max, you might actually be only running 3 minutes if you go out your first set too hard. Uh, then the question becomes, what exactly is my proper VO2 max pace? So Jack Daniels has a simple V dot calculator which you can find online and I'll link to it down in the description below. You just have to put in your personal best time and the calculator will give you the paces you should be training at. So how many times a week should you be training your VO2 max? And what's the typical set like? So ideally, you want to train your VO2 max once a week. And the other intense session will be your lactic threshold session. And the sets are determined by whether you can complete the time spent at VO2 max. For example, beginners might only be doing 3 times 800 meters, so that's 2.4 km of VO2 max work. But for more experienced runners, you might be doing 4 times 800 meters, 5 times 800 meters, or 4 times 1k. So in total, you are doing up to 5k to 6k worth of VO2 max work. But again, most importantly, you have to be running at your VO2 max pace, not too fast and especially not below your VO2 max pace. There's no point going for a longer set if you spend zero time at VO2 max. Alright, I think VO2 max is taking too long, so I'll explain it in more detail in another post. Let's move on to another more important factor, and that's your lactic threshold. Lactic threshold will determine your running performance better than your VO2 max. VO2 max is like your maximum potential, and your lactic threshold is a percentage of your VO2 max where you are most efficient. Training your lactic threshold is exactly the same philosophy as training your VO2 max. Your lactic threshold pace is a pace where your body produces more lactic acid than it can clear. So when you run at your lactic threshold pace, you're training your body to clear lactic acid faster. You also can get your exact lactic threshold pace using the V-Dot calculator as mentioned earlier in the video. So if you don't know your lactic threshold pace, is roughly your 1 hour time trial pace or in training is a pace that you can roughly hold 20 to 30 minutes for each set. And around a 400 meter track, your lactic threshold should be around 6 seconds slower than your VO2 max lap. Jack Daniels likes to prescribe a 20 minute lactic threshold set or a series of longer intervals that make up 20 to 30 minutes. For example, 4 times 6 minutes and 1 minute of recovery. For lactic threshold workouts, you usually have a very short rest so that your body doesn't clear too much lactic acid before the next rep. So a typical set might be 3, 4 or 5 times 1.6 km and 1 minute rest. And remember, you should only increase the length of the set only after you can comfortably do the shorter set. That's all for lactic threshold for now. I'll talk about the physical adaptations and the lactic acid graph in another video. But for now, let's move on to the most important factor which is improving your running economy. Running economy is not just a fancy term. It is actually measured in milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per minute. And the lower your number means the less oxygen you use to move the same amount of distance. That means the more efficient you become. In fact, someone with a lower VO2 max can run faster than someone with a higher VO2 max because their running economy is better. So here are the largest factors affecting your running economy. Number one is mileage. So the more you run, your body simply becomes more used to running and you become more economical. I'll talk in detail about the physical adaptations in the muscle cells in another video. But for now, all you gotta understand is more mileage equals to better running economy. But there's a catch. You see a lot of professional runners running more than 100 miles, 200 kilometers a week. But you can't do that. That's stupid. You're more likely to risk an injury doing that. So what's the best mileage which has the most gains and relatively safe and injury free? Unfortunately, it's different for everybody and very talented athletes can put out impressive times having very little mileage. But it is always a curve of diminishing returns. It means that you're gonna have less improvements for every additional increase in mileage. 
but from Sage Canada's video, he says that when he, when he increased his mileage from 20 to 30 miles a week to 40 to 50 miles a week, that's when he gained the most performance. That kind of makes sense to me because many professional triathletes I see on Strava are also doing 40 to 50 miles a week. So an example of a 40 mile week might look like this. 11K with VO2 max efforts on Tuesday, 10K easy on Wednesday, 16K with lactic threshold efforts on Thursday, 6K easy on Saturday, and a 21K long run on Sunday. So a 50 mile week might have the same structure. You just play around with the numbers, adding a little bit more to your warm up and cool downs. Also another good rule of thumb is for your long run distance not to be more than 30% of your total mileage per week. Next, to improve running economy, you obviously need to improve your running form. So what are some running form basics? I'll do an another more detailed running form video in the future, but essentially don't heel strike, land on your mid to fore foot, and don't swing your arms across your body. And also run at a high cadence of around 180 to 190 steps per minute. But a good place to start is watching elite runners run, and you get a sense of how smooth and uh, light they are on their feet. Strength training also helps with your running form. Your core is essential to keep you from running like a noodle at the end of the race. So that's why you should do your drills, strength training, plyometrics, mobility and strides to improve your running form. I've also made a video of exactly what strength sets to do and I'll link to it in the description below. I do my strength set every Tuesday as part of the warm up before my VO2 max run. It includes stuff like squats, box jumps, step ups, did bark and planks. And I picked up that routine from learning about Iliuk Kichoge strength routine. On Thursday before my lactate threshold workout, I'll do some mobility activation such as high knees, butt kicks and strides. And I will also do a warm up routine video later in the future. But drills are a super important part of maintaining good running form. Doing strides will also help you improve your running form. So that means doing a few hundred to 200 meter sprints, having a long rest in between. These short bursts are just to help you practice your leg turnover and it's a great way to engage your core, keeping your posture in check and I try to do my strides at least once every week. The weight that you carry on you is also a very important part of the running economy because weight is a part of the running economy equation. So removing weight from your clothes, your belly, your shoes will improve your running economy. If you want to lose some weight, the first thing that you have to look at is where in your diet are the fats coming from. So according to Harvard, the top sources of saturated fat in our diet are cheese, pastries, dairy, chicken, and then comes your processed meats and beef burgers. So I know that cleaning out your diet might be the hardest thing to accomplish in the world, and most people are unwilling to give out the unhealthy foods they are eating every day. I don't want to go too in depth about nutrition here, but the point is that everyone should strive to eat a healthier and cleaner diet. Alright, back to the subject on weight. We can always wear lighter shoes for our speed workouts and races and train with heavier shoes on. And training with heavier shoes means that it's less likely that you'll have an injury because heavier shoes tend to have more cushion. So now that I've shared the secret of how to run like professional runners, competition is gonna be a lot harder for me. And now it just depends on who trains and recovers more consistently and also who is the healthiest. So now just a quick recap. You can improve your VO2 max and lactate threshold by running at that pace every week. You can find the paces using Jack Daniels V dot calculator online. Next, running economy trans VO2 max and lactate threshold. So to improve your running economy, do your drills, strength training, strides, increase your mileage and remove excess weight from your body and unfortunately eat a healthier diet. So thank you guys so much for sticking until the end. If you got some value out of this video and you want to learn more, feel free to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys again next week. Bye!